is Jalen Hurts in or is Jalen Hurts out? Well, Nick Sirianni gave the answer yes with no clarification. All right, y'all, let's get into this one. Cerebral football fans, my name is Steven Heider. This is Gate City Sports Channel. If you're new to the channel, we're the first, second, third time you caught my content and you enjoy today's discussion. We're on a journey, we're on a path that just crossed us over 6,900 subscribers. We're heading towards 7,500 subscribers. I would love for you to be a part of that equation and join the cerebral football community. We call ourselves the Cerebral Lights. Just need you to hit that subscribe button to do that to my old G subscribers. Hat in hand here to ask you that favor, guys. Hit that thumbs up button, smash the like button, help me spike this algorithm and get this in front of new people that we potentially convert to our little audience here on the YouTube. All right, y'all. Today's topic. Oh, man. Boy, the, the news cycle. I didn't make a video for a couple of days on purpose, guys, because the news cycle was just spinning. I didn't want to have any part of this crap. I knew that you needed to chill out and wait for a few minutes to see what was going on, right? I mean, uh, rest in peace, Mike Leach. You know, that's a terrible thing. You know, got his life cut. Probably shorter than what it should have been, you know, for the young man. I'm calling him a young man. He's significantly older than me, by the way. <laughs> but you get what I mean. It, it was cut short. You know, Garner Minshew was a guest speaker. Or was one of the people who spoke at his funeral. I don't know if guest speaker is the correct term there, guys. My apologies. Um, but nonetheless, you know, Garner Minshew left practice yesterday to attend those services and to be a speaker at these services. And, you know, we have this news circulating that, you know, Jalen Hurts. Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? Man, this is a tough one, guys, because uh, on one hand, man, good luck trying to tell Jalen Hurts if he feels like he's healthy enough to play that he ain't playing. Man, you're, you're going to need an army. This young man does not strike me as the type of person who just wants to ice things away and you know try to get it back to 100%. To me, I think it comes down to pain toleration when you're dealing with a shoulder injury. Um, the risk is basically what the risk is is you get dropped on your shoulder again. That, that's really the risk. You're not going to hurt it necessarily throwing the ball. Unless it's inside the actual joint itself, you're probably not going to do much damage by throwing the football if it's a, a grade one. I'm not a doctor. Please take everything I'm saying here with a grain of salt. I'm just speaking from my own experience. You know, throwing the football before, playing quarterback before, having a shoulder injury before. It's normally a pain tolerance thing, and the bigger concern is you getting dropped back on the shoulder a second time. From what I understand is that the area where the, the sprain is at is pretty close to the collarbone, and the original fear was a broke collarbone, which turn out to be for, uh, you know, Jalen's sake, not to be the case. So, do you play him? That's a tough one, man. That's a tough one because, on one hand, I ain't going to sit here and hold you. I'm not going to lie. I want to be Dallas. I, I definitely want to be Dallas. I, and I, I don't just want to be Dallas. I want Jalen to be Dallas. I want specifically for Jalen Hurts to beat Dak Prescott in the Cowboys, to shut this talk up. I do. I'm not going to cap about this. I'm just not. I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to be true to what I am as a content creator, to what you guys know of me as my community here. I want Jalen to play, and I want him to beat the Cowboys. I'm not even going to front. But hold on. Hold on. Today's video is sponsored by Gate City Sports. Hey, what's up, guys? If you have not had the opportunity yet to go check out the catalog, go check out the catalog. There's some gems in there. Like this black trucker's cap with the mesh lining on the back, guys. Check it out, man. The green cerebral logo. The white Gate City, you know, lettering here. The white shades. Bro, it stands out. It looks good. It fits, feels good. The brim is nice and firm on this thing. It's a great product, guys. Hey, man, do me a favor. If you guys have the time, you have the energy, you got some money, support the channel, guys. Link's down below. I also, I understand, guys. Is it really worth risking your quarterback for the duration or even not even the duration but even a game within the the playoffs would turn out to be the duration if you're not careful i, I don't know man I, you know that's the tough thing right is that in my opinion you can get hurt at any point playing football you know what i'm saying like we can do all these things to try to you know shore up and safeguard the shoulder for for jalen hurts and the guy can turn an ankle <laughs> you know what i mean like you can't football is a contact sport it, it gets rough you get hurt I definitely think the coaching staff, I'm hoping, took some lessons from that game. Because we saw that Matt Eberflus, who is a very good defensive mind, he's a very good defensive football coach. We saw Eberflus did some things, right? I said in my video that, got to thank the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears kind of said, hey, 
I'm just saying, if I was going to defend this guy and I had to play this guy twice a year in my division, this is what I would do to this young man. This is what I would do to the, your system, your offense. Somebody put film out there for our, our coaching staff to then reevaluate. Someone gave Jalen Hurts the mental reps to see how people are going to play that option type style offense. Now, we need to have counter punches. And I think one of the counter punches needs to be I was all for don't change a thing. Don't change the RPOs, don't change any of this stuff until somebody shuts it down. But when somebody shuts it down, and by the way, that shutdown, and I think it was more so due to the elements than the contact, I think that narrative is getting taken away a little too far, personally. I think it had more to do with the elements that he was playing in, and the ground is freaking, you know, it's like slamming into concrete, basically. I think that had more to do with it than anything. But nonetheless, you know, quarterback got a little shaken up on that. You, you know, now you got to think about the fact that, hey, man, they started stunting, they started moving the line, making it harder for us to, to just zone read them because they're stunning to the outside containment. So now we kind of have to, you know, we got to pay attention to what teams are doing with their line shifts in order to, to defend this game. You got a counterpunch, guys. We have to come up with the counterpunch now. Someone put it on film for us. Other teams will implement it, right? In the past, and I don't, you see, here's a tough thing, man. I haven't watched a lot of Dallas's film, but I do know that in the past, they did used to use a lot of line stunts. But I think that was more so under Nolan than it was underneath their current, you know, their current defensive coordinator and their current staff. So I would have to really go back and take a look at how often they're stunting their lines. But if I'm Dallas, I'm probably looking at what was replicated by Chicago. And if Jalen Hurts is in the game, I'm probably going to stunt my line a little bit. I'm probably going to do some outside containment with those stunts. You know, I'm probably going to try to take a little bit of the heat off of Michael Parsons. Maybe get Parsons freed up on the pass rush off of that stunt and have my other guy play the outside containment there. I would assume you're going to see a lot of line stunts and a lot of teams walking down seven, eight guys in the box. I would say an eighth defender in the box because if you only put seven in the box with Jalen Hurts out there as the quarterback, brother, we're still plus one on you. And uh, that's the thing. You know, that's what makes this offense partially really, really difficult to defend. Miles Sanders is a really good back. He's really grown in the few years he's been in Philadelphia. You see the patience. You see the vision from him. Jalen Hurts has gotten to become, you know, you could say this is the system. I'm just going to say that Jalen Hurts is the system. Make no mistakes about it. Jalen Hurts is the system. The system hurts, don't it? So, I think you got to find a counterpunch, guys. I, I think you have to counterpunch. Now, if Garner Minshew plays, what does that mean to me? It means nothing. He's the backup quarterback. Nick Sirianni explained the roles to all these guys. You know, I know some of you guys feel a certain way about him going into to coach, you know, Sirianni's office. And, and I, I want to caution this. We're trusting the source. We're trusting the source that said, you know, I don't think the source is lying per se, but I don't know that the full context of things also gets captured in these things. So I want to be a little careful with what I'm saying here because I wasn't there. I didn't witness anything. But what we heard reported is, is he asked for the starting job. As long as Jalen is okay with this, as long as Jalen and... You know, Garner have found some kind of common ground, which from everything I've heard from Jalen Hurts seems to be like, man, there's no beef here. It, you know, there's no beef here. I want the young man to be successful too, just not where it concerns me. <laughs> That's what I got from Jalen. Um, if there's no beef there, then I don't think there's anything to really talk about in that regard. He's the backup quarterback, and he's a high-end caliber backup quarterback. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses like the other team did. If Garner Minshew goes out there and plays, and Garner Minshew is the quarterback, you win with what you got on the field. Okay. As long as the rest of your starting unit is in the game, you got to go win it. You know, yes, I, I know that we were all a little ticked off about these guys trying to chirp up and talk at us because they beat Gardner Minshew in the last game of the season last year when, like, I don't know, what, four, five, six dudes that started that game are not even in the league currently? I mean, that's that was the quality of the roster that was out there for that game. Irregardless, this time around, I'm not going to make excuses because the starting team would be out there with them. Personally, I'd like to see Jalen Hurts play if he could. But I don't want to risk something that's not necessary. It's a risk assessment. Jalen knows how he feels. Jalen knows the pain tolerance level that, that he can get through. Anything else, guys, is coincidental. You know, if you're the offensive line, you've got to really do your job now. We need to keep bodies off of Jalen Hurts. I think the question becomes is you only need one win. You need one win down the stretch of these three games to lock up home field advantage. Do you trust Garner Minshew in a three-game span to get you one win? Do you trust that if you rested jail in a week, maybe two weeks, and then brought him back if you had to for the Week 18 game against the Giants, you get that win if it comes down to that, where comes that becomes a necessary game where you got to win it? It's ebb and flow. It's the ebb and flow of the season, guys. I, I don't know, man. I mean, like I said, if he's healthy enough to play, 
And it's just a general risk. You know, it's a general risk you take anytime you're out there. That, hey man, you can land the wrong way and then you're in trouble. I'm probably going to play them. If, however, there's a bigger concern here and that they're, you know, look man, right now it's a low grade tear. It's a low grade strain, but this could develop into something much more serious and it's probably not going to take too much contact for that to happen. I don't think that's worth it, guys. And I think obviously you rest them. I don't know what's going to happen, guys. I don't know if it's going to be Jalen Hurts. I don't know if it's going to be Gardner Minshew. I don't know if Nick Sirianni is playing people. I don't know if Jalen's playing people. I don't know. I don't know, man. All I know is, is that our backup quarterback, you know, attended funeral services just yesterday. We are probably will know a better status of what's going on tomorrow by Thursday. I think by Thursday we'll have a pretty good idea of who is and is not going to play. But I wouldn't be shocked if this thing doesn't go all the way down to the line and they don't say game time decision. That's how I look at it, guys. I don't know, man. All I'm going to say is get the win. I don't care. Go get me the win. Get me that win no matter who's playing. And by the way, I think the other conversation is is that if Jalen doesn't play and Garner Winshu gets the win, you know, what do you do, man? What do you do with Jalen Hurts? Do you manage that? Do you manage that shoulder? Do you let it fully heal up knowing you're going to have a bye week on top of that? Do you worry about the rust of being off for four or five weeks? You know, I think it would be four weeks technically, somewhere in that area, right, to where you're not really in game action. Uh, do you treat it like the preseason? You say, look, we're going to bring Jalen Hurts out there for probably a series or two. We're going to treat it that way like a preseason game. We're going to try to get him live game reps. We're going to try to keep him up to speed, let him see defenses, get the speed of the game, and then we're taking him out of the games. This is interesting, man. All I got to say is we're 13-1. and and I don't care if it's Garner Minshew. I don't care if it's Jalen Hurts. I want this game. I want this game on Christmas Eve. I absolutely want this game. I ain't going front. I'm not lying. I want the game. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all. And I'll see you guys on the next video.